Hello everyone and welcome to the newest installment on my channel called the Horrorverse. I can't decide if I want to do Horror Corner or Horrorverse. Let me know down below which one you would like to hear. But this is something I've always wanted to do. I'm very passionate about all things horror. So I know in the past my videos have been beauty and makeup related, but I'm wanting to do something that I'm very passionate about. You will still probably see some makeup content from me, but going forward, it's probably long videos are gonna be dedicated to the horror movie genre, along with any books, any TV shows, but I just wanted to give that little disclaimer at the beginning. But today we are going to be talking about the history of horror movies because I, like I said, I love all things horror and I figured what better way to kick the new channel segment off than giving the history of it and my opinion on kind of a lack of originality. I'll explain it later. Now, if you see me looking down at any time, I have my notes down here just because I wanna make sure that I'm getting dates right and names right. But without further ado, let's get in to the history of horror films. To start, we are gonna talk about the first horror movie that was ever released because I've actually never known this, but in 1896, there was a three minute long film released called Les Manoirs des Diables by George Mieles. It's French, I don't speak French. I'm so sorry if I offended anyone with that horrible pronunciation, but roughly it translates to Haunted Castle or House of the Devil. And like I said, it's only three minutes long because they didn't really have, you know, the technology like we do now to make long-term content. But the short featured cauldrons, bats, animated skeletons, really just all the elements that make up a kind of spooky supernatural vibe. Um, and then as we moved on to the 1920s and 1930s, we started to see more of an emergence of this film genre such as Nosferatu, which came out in 1922, uh, The Headless Horseman, which also came out in 1922, The Man Who Laughs, which came out in 1928, which I'm gonna talk about a little later in the video. And we also have a lost film called Monster Frankenstein. This one came out in 1920. And like I said, it's a lost film, so I don't think we're ever gonna be able to really watch it. Um, I know they would burn film footage back then when I learned that it broke my heart like if they didn't think they were ever going to use it or if it was like a just a bad take they would burn it <laughs> um so the Nosferatu film which came out in 1922 is actually deemed one of the best horror movies of all time and touches on every vampire cliche vampire trope that we honestly still use in all of our vampire stuff today and I'm super excited because Christmas of this year, we have a new Nosferatu movie featuring Nicholas Holt, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Bill Skarsgård, Lily Rose Depp, and Nicolas Cage. So please make sure to hit the theaters on Christmas because I'm so excited. <laughs> I feel like Nicholas Holt has just been killing it within recent years, so I'm super excited to see him in this. But we're not talking about the future, we're talking about the past right now, so that's take it back um let's see so sorry i lost my train of thought because i got so excited talking about this upcoming film i love all things vampires um moving on to the 1930s as we were being able to sort of break away from silent films we started to see an era of one of if not the most famous recognizable name in this genre bella lugosi who brought us such an iconic role as Dracula. Um, I feel like he really was such a star and got to specialize in that genre. So, you know, thank you for making it such a pivotal point to be so iconic and let us take those sort of different mannerisms that you were able to bring to Dracula and use them in what we still use today. So 
I feel like we do get a new vampire movie every year. <laughs> All of which are very good, and I feel like we wouldn't have if it wasn't for Bella Lugosi. But I am thinking about making a separate video in the future dedicated to just vampires, like different vampire movies, vampire books, vampire TV shows, uh, kind of how we got like the history of vampires in our media and literature. So if that is something you would guys like to see, please let me know. But Today, I wanted to talk about three separate plot lines in horror that I feel are starting to feel overdone. Disclaimer, this is just my opinion. I am in no way attacking anyone or talking crap about these plots or these films. And because I do enjoy a lot of these films, I just feel like these plots are kind of getting a little old. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is the premise of evil or killer clowns. The first one that I was able to find on this was The Man Who Laughs, which came out in 1928, as I previously mentioned. This movie follows the main character, Gwynplaine, who, as a boy, a surgeon had carved a very grotesque, hideous grin into his face. Um, so he spends his life just with this horrible grin and it scares people, which is why I think this film was dubbed a horror film, but what was so interesting to learn was that this movie actually was what inspired the DC comic character, the Joker. I thought that was so fascinating. And another interesting thing to learn was that this movie enters public domain this year, 2024. I'm hoping people just leave it alone, but unfortunately, you know they won't because Rob Zombie is already doing something with Steamboat Willie as that one just became public domain. I might still watch it though. But the concept of a killer clown dates all the way back to the 1920s, which was so fascinating for me to learn. And I know the concept of clowns being creepy dates back way further than that. But today we're just talking about movies. And I feel like this concept, there are two movies to me that stand out the most, and that is, would be killer clowns from outer space. And uh, honestly, all the movies of it that we have gotten. And if you guys can think of any other clown movies that you like and that kind of like pop to your head when you think of a creepy clown movie, let me know because there, like I said, there's movies I still haven't even seen because this genre is so expansive. But moving on to the next concept is the concept of a possessed or an evil nun. This one is also nothing new. This premise has been around since 1922. I'm gonna mess up the pronunciation again, so I'm so sorry. I think it's German because it has the two little dots up top, but I think it's pronounced Hauxen or Hexan. Uh, please let me know how to correctly pronounce that. I never wanna like disrespect anyone by mispronouncing a word, but this movie featured a fiction documentary which focused on witchcraft and how it has evolved and the hysteria that it caused in Eastern Europe. I feel like for coming out in 1922 that was such a bold premise <laughs> to put out and the visuals for this are stunning for the time period. Like the color is just beautiful so if you have a chance to look it up. I think it's on Prime, so definitely try to check it out to see kind of how we got our start with this premise. Um, I do feel like more nun movies should be like this. Just, I'm gonna say something, I really hope it doesn't come off as mean, but I feel like recently the nun movies we've gotten all relatively are the same premise. It's all this nun just turned evil. You know, she just woke up, she was hearing voices, woke up one day, and now she is in allegiance with the devil. I just, I wish we can get back to more originality with this concept, but that's not saying that I don't like these movies, but I just wish there would be a little more originality rather than 
the same turned evil. And then the last topic for tonight's roundtable discussion is the plotline of a possessed toy or doll. This one is also nothing new. This one has been around, again, since the 20s with the great Gabo, which focused on an insane ventriloquist who is possessed by his wooden doll who gives advice to the ventriloquist because the ventriloquist is in love with the dancer, but she's in love with somebody else. Um, this movie was released in 1929. There was also The Devil Doll, which was released in 1936. This one was focusing on humans who have been shrunk down and are starting to be controlled psychokinetically. We, so that was kind of the starter to the killer doll premise. And then the other one was Dead of Night, I think it's what it was. Dead in Night, De I think it's Dead of Night though. This one was released in 1945 and was later uh, redone in the 70s, I believe. This one was a rare film in Britain at the time as this horror genre was actually banned from production due to World War II. The film followed guests who took a weekend vacation out into the countryside and they started to share their different supernatural stories of stuff that they've experienced. And the one of the main characters, Walter, realizes that his reoccurring dream that he can only kind of remember is starting to come true. This one was kind of freaky to me. <laughs> I don't get scared easily, but anything having to do with dreams does kind of freak me out. So this one was actually pretty good. Um, but again, the premise of a possessed toy has been around forever and it's something we still use today. This is a very prominently used plot line in making movies with this concept now. We actually have one coming out next month March 8th by Bloomhouse. It's called Imaginary and this one follows a main character. I think her name was Jessica. Her and her family go back to her childhood home and she finds her beloved stuffed teddy Chauncey and her daughter Alice or sorry her stepdaughter Alice takes a huge liking to Chauncey but as they kind of get along Jessica starts to notice that the games that Alice and Chauncey are playing turn really sinister very quickly and she's kind of freaking out because she's like this is not the bear that I know and loved growing up. So I'm super excited for that one. We have a lot of new movies coming out this year but Thank you for letting me ramble and be awkward for my first video. I promise as time goes on, it won't be this awkward. I do plan on moving in a couple months, so hopefully the setup will be a lot better. Then this will have a real background, but it's hard to set something up when you know you're just gonna take it down and move. Um, but yeah, let me know what your guys' favorite horror trope is. And also let me know what your favorite iced coffee flavor is. Mine is a good old classic caramel. So yeah, thank you for spending time with me today this evening in our horror corner. I think that's the one I'm going to go with for the future. But I hope to see you next time. Let me know what other topics you would like to have me talk about. I am always open to suggestions. And I will see you next time in our little horror corner. Have a great night. Bye.